Hi, and welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance. ANOVA is a special case for us to analyze the comparison of means. It allows us to compare means between groups where we have more than two categories. Our t-test was when we had two categories of an independent variable. The t-test is when we have multiple categories of our independent variable beyond two. So we're going to talk about the idea behind ANOVA, what the sum of squared error is, the f-test, the f-distribution. We're going to look at the multiple mean comparisons using things like Tukey's or Bonferroni's, and then we're going to look at the calculation steps, and we'll provide an extensive example. So let's begin. Why not just do a bunch of t-tests? Now imagine you were doing a comparison between two categories of an independent variable, and you're just comparing two means, right? You just ask yourself, how far apart is one mean from another mean? But when you have multiple categories of an independent variable, whether it's nominal or ordinal, you could imagine that every time you wanted to do a comparison of means, you'd have to compare each category of each mean. So imagine we have a four category independent variable, we'll call our categories A, B, C, and D. We'd have to do a comparison between A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, and C, D. That's six different tests. And our goal with hypothesis testing is to get a single summary so we can make a claim about our hypothesis. And so to do that, we're going to use the F test and we're going to use ANOVA. And, and recall, this is a test when we have a nominal or ordinal independent variable and an interval or ratio level dependent variable. So the idea behind ANOVA deals with what's called the sum of squared error. And you should already be familiar with the sum of squared error. Essentially, that's the numerator in a variance calculation. And we can imagine the idea behind a dependent variable. If we, if we were to calculate the variance for a dependent variable by itself, we could get a sum of squared error when we calculate the numerator for that formula. Now, when we think about ANOVA, that total variance that exists in the dependent variable, the numerator, the sum of squared errors when we do the variance, is then subdivided amongst the groups of the categories of the independent variable. So as we introduce an independent variable, each of those categories will now create a subdistribution of the dependent variable. So let's say we were looking at this example here where we have uh, grade point averages that are then broken up by major, where we have engineering majors, political science majors, and floral arranging majors. And each of those majors would then have a subdistribution of grade point average, while the overall average would be centered on 3.11, they also have their own means, right? For example, floral ranging majors have a 2.8 grade point average. On average, uh, the political science majors a 3.1, and the engineering students a 3.425. There's an idea here that what we're going to explain when we look at sum of squared errors is we have our total sum of squared error. That's the dependent variable's error by itself. And then when we introduce the independent variable, we look at the, how far each of the individual means are from the overall group mean. When we figure out these distances, that's going to give us what's called our between group squared error. I.e., if we were to calculate how far the 2.8 is from the 3.11, the 3.1 uh, from the 3.11, and the 3.425 from the 3.1, you could imagine that there's a certain amount of variance that's occurring if we look at just how far each of those means are from the overall mean. On top of that, we have what's called within group squared error. So for example, amongst the engineering students, you can see in this curve here that there's a range of grade point averages for each student who's an engineering student. Some are very good students, getting close to four point averages, and some are not as good, getting less than three point grade point averages. So there's a distribution amongst those engineering students. So you can imagine now, when we try and explain our dependent variable grade point average with our independent variable major that there's still some variation going on within each of the majors there's other things that are explaining the variation so some engineering students might be more motivated or some of the political science students might be less attentive etc there's still other things explaining the variation grade point average other than just the major in and of itself so the total squared error is as i said again the dependent variable the variation by itself. The between group squared error is what you're explaining with ANOVA. And the within group squared error, that's a variation still going on within each of the groups, is what remains unexplained. And 
the total sum of squares is going to be equal to the sum of squared error between plus the sum of squared error within, right? And you can think of this as being our total error is going to equal what we've explained plus what we have not explained. Recall the variance formula. In the numerator, we have the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared. That's our sum of squared errors. And the F test is going to work on this logic. Now, we can work top bottom. So we work from the F statistic down to our sum of squares, or we can work bottom up. And we can see that the, if we work bottom up, we can calculate sum of squared errors within as being how far each individual observation is within a group from the mean of the group. And then we could add up those three different groups. So for example, if we added up the variation that occurred within the engineering students, we added up the, uh, the political science variation, and we added up the variation that was occurring in the engineering students, all of that would be our sum of, total sum of squares within. And our sum of squares between would be how far is each individual group mean from the overall mean, right? And when we have that sum of squares, we can then calculate what's called a mean square. Our mean square is our sum of squares adjusted essentially for sample size and for the number of groups that we have. So our mean square between is going to be divided by our degrees of freedom between, and our mean squares within is going to be divided by our, our degrees of freedom within. And the calculation for those is just simply the degrees of freedom between is going to equal k minus 1, where k is the number of groups. So if we have three groups of our independent variable, k would be 3 minus 1 equals 2. We'd have two uh, degrees of freedom between. And our de degrees of freedom within is going to be our total sample size minus the number of groups. That's going to give us our ratios for our mean square between and mean square within. And then we take those mean squares, and with those mean squares, we can now calculate f, which is our mean squared error between divided by our mean square error within. And remember, back when we first introduced the idea of sum of squares, your sum of squares between is explained variation. So when we get to the point of having a mean square between, that's our explained variation. And our mean square within is our unexplained variation. It looks a lot like a t-test, right? Remember, our t-test was the, how far, essentially, the two means are from each other divided by the standard error of the difference in means. So the F statistic, like the T statistic, is essentially a ratio of explained variation to unexplained variation. So here's our calculation steps. Specify our research in null, always. We're going to observe our data. Now we're going to essentially arrange our data into the categories of the independent variables, calculate the total and group means, calculate between group sum of squares, calculate the sum of squares for each group. That'll give us our within group sum of squares and calculate between and within degrees of freedom. And once we have those, we can get our mean squares and calculate f. Then like the t-test, we're going to have to take that f and look it up on a table to make a decision about our null hypothesis. And then, of course, we have to go back to our research hypothesis to discuss form and degree. And if we have some post-estimation statistics, like a Tukey's or a Bonferroni estimate, we can discuss the significance of the differences between the individual means of the dependent variable within each of the groups of the independent variable. Here's our backstory. Due to a conversation with roommates back in your dorm, you're interested in comparing average GPAs across majors to find evidence supporting a belief that better students gravitate to some majors and students who don't perform academically as well gravitate to others. You collect data from four engineering students, four political science students, and four floral arranging students. Step number one, specify your research and null. And perhaps you have a research hypothesis like this. Engineering students are more likely to have high GPAs than our political science and floral arranging majors. And a null hypothesis, of course, is that there's no relationship between your major and your grade point average. Next, we would observe our data. So say we observed our data to look like this. So we have all of our engineering students, all of our political science, and our floral arranging, which we then arrange in categories of the independent variable. So you can still see observed variation going on within our engineering students, within our political science students, and with our floral arranging students. So what we're going to do first is we're going to calculate the total and group means. And to get the total means, of course, that's just the sum of the value of all the GPAs divided by the number of observations. So that you just add them up and divide by 12, and that'll give you 3.11. And then we're going to get uh, the group means, which is essentially add up all the engineering students and divide by 4. That's our engineering mean. Add up the political science students and divide by 4. That's our political science mean of 3.1. Add up the floral arranging students and divide by 4. And that's our floral arranging mean, 2.8. Recall what we've already calculated. 
Next, we're going to calculate the between group sum of squares. And this is what I'm saying. We're asking ourselves essentially how far does each group mean differ from the overall mean. So we calculated the overall mean to be 3.11. And you can just step through the calculation. So we're going to take n as the number within each group. So in this case, we have 4 in each of our groups. So the n is always going to be 4. We have 4 times 3.425, the mean for our engineering students, minus 3.11, that's the mean for our total, squared, right? And that'll give you how far the engineering students are from the overall mean. And we continue, 4 times 3.1 for our political science students, minus 3.11, our overall mean, squared, plus 4 times 2.8, the mean for our floral arranging students, minus 3.1 squared. And once you calculate all the way across that, you'll see that that calculation, which is going to give us our sum of squares between, is 0 0.782. The next step, we calculate the sum of squares for each group. And think of it like now that you have them in the subgroups, you're essentially setting it up just like a variance calculation for each of the subgroups. And you see as you walk through the steps, so you, you do it just like the, the variance formula, where you do it uh, PEMDAS, right? your order of operations, so you do x minus x bar and x minus x bar squared just amongst the engineering students. So how far do the engineering students differ from the mean of engineering? How far do the political science students differ from the mean of the political scientists? And how far do the floral arranging students differ from the mean of the floral arranging students? Perfect. When you get down to the bottom of these columns here, of course, those are going to be the sum of squares within each group. We take those numbers, the 0 0.548, the 0 0.060 and the 0 0.200, and we add them up. So when we add them up, our sum of squares is going to become 0 0.808. So we now have our two sum of squares, right? Our between and our within. Our next step, we need to figure out the degrees of freedom for both our between group and our within group. Remember, between is k minus 1. We have three categories. Minus 1, we have two degrees of freedom for our between group. And our degrees of freedom within is our total sample size, which is 12, minus the number of categories, which is 3. So we have 9 degrees of freedom within. All right? Now we can get our mean squares. It's our sum of squares divided by our degrees of freedom. So our mean square between is 0 0.3908. And our mean square within is 0 0.0897. Now that we have our mean square between and our mean square within, we can calculate f. And I like to write out f within parentheses, the degrees of freedom in the numerator, comma, the degrees of freedom in the denominator, close parentheses. And the reason I do that is because when we look this up on the table, we're going to need both our degrees of freedom between and our degrees of freedom within to be able to look up the value of f. So we just take that ratio, our 0 0.3908, and divide by our mean square within, which is 0 0.0897, and that gives us an f statistic of 4.356. Now that we have our F statistic with two degrees of freedom in the numerator, nine degrees of freedom in the denominator of 4.356, we can now look up our F statistic on a critical values table. And you can see here that the way F is set up, because we have both degrees of freedom in the numerator and degrees of freedom in the denominator, each confidence level for which we'll be able to make our claim has its own table. So you can see, for example, in the first table, alpha equals 0.1 meaning that this is the table that would give us critical values for 90% confidence. So if I go degrees of freedom in the numerator, that's across the top. There's two degrees of freedom that we have. And degrees of freedom in the denominator, that's down the column. And you can see that there's nine degrees of freedom in uh, the denominator. So the two by nine is this value here of 3.065. This value is the critical value for the F statistic at 90% confidence. Right? And our F statistic of 4.356 exceeds that critical value of 3.0065. So having found that our F statistic was significant at more than 90% confidence, we have to go to the next table in the F distribution. And so we'd look at the 95% confidence table. And when we go to 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator, 9 degrees of freedom in the denominator, that value, that critical value of F is 4.2565. And once we've exceeded that critical value, then we can say that we're at least 95% confident. And of course, our F statistic that we've calculated of 4.356 does exceed the 4.2565. We then again move on until we run out of tables. And in this case, the last table that we have is our 99% confidence table.
And when we go 2 in the numerator, 9 in the denominator, our critical value of f that we need to exceed to have 99% confidence is 8.0215. So in this case, we do not exceed the 8.0215. So what we can say about our value of the f statistic is that we're more than 95% confident we can reject the null when we claim there's a relationship between the major of a student and their grade point average. Excellent. So having established that our relationship is statistically significant, now we need to think about how far apart the means are and are they in the direction that we predicted. And you can see here, I, I, I've created a table here that looks at the difference between engineering and political science students. So in this case, the upper right or upper left hand corner here, the political science students on average are 0.325 grade points lower than engineering students and floral arranging students are 0.625 lower than engineering students. Some software packages like SPSS can produce a summary of means for you. And they can do what's called a two keys, which will tell you the probability of making a type one error when you say that there's a difference between the engineering students and the political science students, or the engineering students and the floral arranging students. And in essence, that's what, what's happening here. So the, the value below the difference, so we have the mean of negative 0.325, the political science are 3.25 lower than the engineering students. This is a p-value below it here, the 0.478. So our probability of my, making a type one error when we claim that political science students are different from engineering students is quite high. So we'd fail to reject the null in that case. But when we compare engineering students to floral arranging students, that p-value is 0.049. Or we can reject the null hypothesis with 95% confidence when we say that engineering students and floral arranging students have different average GPAs. And when we compare political science students to floral arranging students, the p-value of 0.571 says that we can fail to reject the null. Now, this probably makes sense if you look at this graphic here, because what you can see is that there's very little overlap between the curves for those in the floral arranging major and those in the engineering major. However, the political science students have significant overlap insofar as their curve is, is considered with both the floral arranging students and the engineering students. And so just looking at the two curves, you could probably make a guess that, you know, the floral arranging students and the engineering students are probably being drawn from different distributions, but you're not really sure given the curve for the political scientists. You're not certain if in fact it's possible that the, the political science students could have an average that's lower than the average for the floral arranging students or possibly higher than the average for the engineering students. So you can see that the directionality, as you discuss directionality here, the lowest you have observed is floral arranging, the second lowest is political scientists, and the highest is uh, our engineering students. Our, hypo our original hypothesis says that engineering was going to be higher than both floral arranging students and political science students. Well, we can say that they're higher than floral arranging students with at least 95% confidence. We can't say that they're higher than political science students. Again, as we think about testing this hypothesis, recall that we only have 12 observations here, four within each category. And before you jump to the conclusion of saying there's no evidence to support your hypothesis, you might want to go back and think about the, your risk of making a type 2 error as you say that engineering students do not have a higher average than political science students. You might want to talk about increasing your sample size. Excellent. Here's what we've done. We've discussed what ANOVA is. We've considered the sums of squared error and what they mean. We've looked at the F test and the F distribution. We've looked at the multiple mean comparisons. We walked through the calculation steps and we did an example. Great job, students. Before moving on to the next lecture video on regression, be sure to do the lab video for ANOVA, which will teach you how you use ANOVA with SPSS. See you soon.